this week till now we have seen different types of variables we talked about independent and dependent variables and then we moved on to different types of studies and finally we studied in detail about the sampling survey now let us consider a real world data set and see how these concepts can be implemented using python Suppose an OTT platform wants to evaluate how the general public perceives its service with the goal of boosting the number of subscriptions. So an OTT platform as you know it provides content over the internet such as you have Netflix, Amazon Prime Video and your Disney Plus. So all these platforms are referred to as OTT platforms that is over the top. Now suppose one of these platforms wants to evaluate the public opinion towards the service they are providing. In order to do that they have to collect data and then they have to analyze it. Now note that if they know about what the public opinion is then they can identify what are the areas in which they need improvement and once they know that it will enhance users experience and ultimately increase the number of subscribers so it is their goal to conduct such a study now in this if you can identify what is a independent and what are the dependent variable over here so if you see independent variable is basically the public's perception towards a service and the dependent variable is the number of subscriptions. Next if you look at the different types of variables so this will be more evident to you once we have a look at the data set and there we will identify in Python what are the different types of variables there whether which one is nominal ordinal categorical or you can say on the quantitative sides you will have discrete or continuous. Then what type of study will this be? As you can see here, here what is happening? The OTT platform owners, they just want to evaluate the public's perception. They want to collect data and analyze it so that they can increase the number of subscriptions. In order to do that, they can conduct an observational study because they do not want to interfere and manipulate the independent variables. So in this case, they can conduct an observational study and specifically if you see they can conduct a sample survey that will give them a snapshot of the current status. So here the population will be the entire user base of the OTT platform and sample will be basically a subset of that. And since we cannot get data from each and every individual we will collect a sample from that which will be a subset of that population. So we will try to understand and interpret this data using Python. So as we know Python is a high level programming language which is known for its simplicity and readability. So if you have to install it and if you are using Windows then you have to first go to this link or you go to the website of Python and there in the download section you will find the latest release. And in this course, we will be using Python 3.11.5. So you can install that. Once you have downloaded it, you will run the installer. And make sure that you select this option that is add python.exe to path during the installation process. So remember to select this option. And then you can click on install now and Python will be immediately installed. This is the process for Windows. Likewise, you can opt for Unix or you can go for Mac operating system. So since I am using Mac operating system, so I am uh, I cannot show you the steps over here. And these are easy steps and you can simply follow them and um, you will be able to easily install it. Next, we will be working on Jupyter Notebook 
because it is a powerful tool for coding and data analysis and it is a very user friendly format and uh, based because of this it has become an essential part of toolkit for data scientists and researchers so i will quickly show you how does it look like so let me first tell you the steps how to install it in order to do that you can use the python package manager pip so you go to the start option and uh, in your laptop or desktop and there in the command prompt you type pip install jupyter so immediately the installation will start and once it is done you can write jupyter notebook and it will open this so you can also create a new jupyter notebook by clicking the new button and selecting a python kernel so i will open the jupyter notebook and there you will see how these can be done me a fresh jupyter notebook so now let us see how we can do so let me just initially show you the basic commands like if i want to suppose print something then i will give the command i will write it in double quotes hello so you can see that whatever string that i want it to appear it will be in the double quotes and when i press enter it will give me the answer so note that if i if you just press enter then it will give you a next line however if you press shift and enter then only it will run so the output will be generated when you press shift and enter together or if you want to just do some basic mathematical operations then 2 plus 3 will give you 5 next we can look at suppose i can assign it to 2 to a is equal to 2 plus 3 and if i just now make enter then it will not return anything because we have just now assigned 2 plus 3 that is 5 to a and now if i want to see what is stored in a then i will have to write it again so i will get the output similarly if you want to multiply two numbers so you will use this asterisk over here and then shift enter will give you the answer similarly for dividing you can probably just uh, you can write this as in bracket like the it will follow the same process as we do in bodmus and just divide by 2 so it will give you an output of 3 fine so these are some basic steps so now let us go to the main study over here since we want to work with that ott platform data set so now let us see how we should proceed so first of all we will be importing pandas as pd so pandas basically is a python library which is used for data manipulation and analysis and it can provide data structures like data frames for handling and analyzing tabular data so working with pandas basically makes our work easier and it is widely used in data science and data analysis now why i am i writing as pd so you can also just import pandas and do not write as pd right when i write as pd it means in future i will be calling pandas using this notation pd so here you can instead use ab or maybe any other thing that you like but since to make it more easy we will just use pd so that you can identify that it denotes pandas okay so this is the first step now so i will just press shift and enter so this will give shift to the next line now i will have to load the data set so whenever i am writing something with a hash so it is basically a comment and it will not be considered as an input so i will be using data i will be creating a data frame pd dot read underscore csv in single quotes i will write so i have saved my data 
set in this name ott underscore perception underscore data dot csv so let me just run it then i will explain what i have written over here so before actually performing this step you should upload the data set so here if you go to the main home page so here there is an upload option also so in upload you can go and here you can see that i have the ott perception data so i have uploaded it since it is already present in this folder so you can see it will automatically run and for you you can first initially save it and then perform this step now here what is happening is that data is basically i am using this as a data frame right so data frame is basically a two dimensional tabular data structure that looks like a spreadsheet or a database table now you can see that i have written pd because i have used this notation for pandas so pd dot read underscore csv since this is a csv file i have used this notation if it was excel file so you will change this accordingly so basically i have loaded the data set the csv data set in a data frame known as data now let us see how the data looks like so view the entire data set all right so in order to do that i can print so in print i will have to write it in double quotes i will write entire data set so whatever i write in the quotes it will be printed as it is and if i just write this so it will just print this okay so you will see that it entire data set will come but i do not want just this heading but i want the entire data set also so i need to write an additional command over here data dot head in bracket so if i write this what it will give me you can see it is giving me the first five rows of the data set now let us understand what this command is i have written print in bracket i have written data because data is the data frame that i am using from there basically i am using head open bracket close bracket so here basically what it does this step over here what it does is that it is going to return the top 5 rows by default so the data of whatever the data frame is it will return the first or the top 5 rows so you can see the indexing starts from zero okay so and it goes up till four only so remember that this point whenever you are working in python that the first row will always be starting from zero since the data size is huge i'm just calling the first five row suppose you want to look at the entire data set so i can just write print data so you can see that it is giving me the entire thing for all the columns you can see that there are 1000 rows okay so these are the variables so what are the variables over here let me see user id is there of each individual who has registered in that ott platform their age is mentioned gender is mentioned subscription plan whether it is basic or premium or ultra then ratings are given next we have the time spent device most used whether they are using tablet or mobiles or they are watching on tv the other one can be the number of devices in which they are logged in what is the content quality they have graded it is good excellent or poor and what is the monthly ott bill so this is how your data set looks like now suppose you want to extract specific rows from this data set so let me just write this it rows if i have to extract specific rows suppose i want to extract rows 5th to 10th so i will create a new data frame specific rows so you can give any name according to your convenience i lock 4 10 
So I log function basically it is from Panda's library. It is used to extract a subset of rows from the data frame. Okay. So here since it is starting from fourth row and it will go till ninth only because the last one that you write over here that is if you write 10 then it will exclude this particular row it will go up till 9 only and let me just write over here exam so I am just uh, I want to extract rows 5 to 10 all right so according to this since it starts from 0 so it will row 5 will nothing but be, it will be fourth index 4 and uh, here it will go up till 9 okay now if I want to print this so I can write so it depends upon you whatever you want to print so you just remember that you have to write in double quotes sorry 5 to 10 you can put up mark over here and then print specific because this is the new data frame right specific rows so I want to print what is in this data frame specific rows and I do shift and enter so I get this so you can see that it is starting from fourth and it is going up till ninth okay and it is corresponding to serial number 5 to 10 and it is giving you some specific rows. Now here you see that I wanted this specific heading that is why it is there. Now here you can also give an additional line over here suppose I add slash n and then I run it then what it is the difference over here you see that it has left an extra line over here right. So what it does is slash n if the use of this is that it is an escape sequence basically so it represents a new line character it will whenever you do it it will insert a new line character at that point in the string so now suppose I just write it in between specific rows suppose here I want it to change it to a new line slash n so I can give a space so you will see how does it look like now you see it has shifted to the next row over here right so wherever you want to shift the string to the next line at that point only you will insert this slash n and see there is a space coming over here right so r is starting a bit a sec, an extra space is there so if i just write it next to each other then it will give me just below that right so it causes this basically causes the string text to be printed on a new line. So I will just remove this because it is of not such use in this case right. So we have extracted some specific rows similarly if you want to extract specific columns. So let us see how it can be do it. So I will again create a new data frame specific columns so I will write it in data so suppose you want to extract user ID and you also want to extract the column of rating you want to see what rating has been given by a particular ID so note that I have used the same heading over here which has which is in the data set right if you make any mistake over here if you change this even id to small id then it will not read and give you an error okay so be careful while writing this then i will print it again i can use specific columns so I want user ID and rating and if I print it 
specific so i want to print this data frame so i will write this command specific column so if i enter shift and enter it then what will happen is that it will give me 1000 rows for these two columns right but since that will be too much i can just simply as extract the first five rows for these two columns by using this right so let me just recall what we have done so far so we have first imported pandas we have loaded the data set and we have viewed how the entire data set looks like or if we just want a the top five rows then how we will do it if you want to extract some specific rows then we use this command and you can see how it is coming and then for specific columns also we can do in this way now since we were interested in the type of variables so let us use let us first see what are the discrete variables so in this data set if you can see discrete number of devices is your discrete variable right so let me just write create a new data frame as discrete and write data so what i want is number of devices so note that i have to write the same thing as it is given in the data set so number of devices okay once I do this, going to the next line, I want it to have the heading discrete variable, right? And if I want to see how this new data frame looks like, discrete dot head. So we have we can see that in the first five rows the discrete variable that you had it is the number of devices it has printed that what are the number of devices corresponding to the first five individuals. Now likewise we can extract your continuous variables also. So I will like to save it in continuous. So let us see what are the continuous variables over here. So continuous time spent is continuous, right? And monthly OTT bill is also continuous. So let me just write it. Time underscore spent. And this one will be monthly underscore OTT underscore bill. Fine. Now I will print it. I want the heading continuous variables. So let us see how does the new data frame look like continuous dot so the first five rows are these for time spent and monthly OTT bill you can see that these are the corresponding five rows so these are the continuous variables next we have the nominal variable so let us see what are the nominal variables over here. So let me save it in nominal. So nominal variables in our data set, gender is there, right? Gender is one nominal variable. And then you have uh, device most used, device. So gender is your nominal device most used. So most used. So you will again 
print the heading of nominal variables. So what are the nominal variables? Nominal variables are those which can be divided into categories but you cannot order them. There is no inherent ordering present in them. So you can see here in gender you have different categories but you cannot order them. Similarly the device most used. So what are the categories over here? Tablet, PC and then there was TV also. So these are basically mobile is there. So these are categories but you cannot say that or you cannot order them. And here I will just type nominal. I will extract the first five rows. If you want to see the entire data set also that also you can do. So for the first five you have got this information gender and most device, device most used. Suppose I do not want the first five rows and instead I want to see how, how it is for the entire data set. So you can see uh, the first five rows it has given and the last five rows. So you have the devices like tablet, mobile, TV. So these are the categories. Next we move on to ordinal variables. Ordinal. So I am creating this data frame. Data. So what are the ordinal variables in our data set? Ordinal means categories are there but it can also you can also say that one is better than the other. So you can see that subscription plan is also an ordinal variable because here you have categories but you also know that premium offers a better video quality right so subscription plan will fall under your ordinal category similarly rating also because here you know that if somebody has rated it 5 then obviously it is going to be better than the rating 3 or 1 Likewise, the content quality also. So, content quality can be good or poor. So, these we know that if somebody has marked good, then it is going to be definitely better than this other one who has marked poor. So, let me just note down these. So, rating is one of them. So, I have to write capital R over here. Then the next one will be subscription plan. And finally, we have content quality, which is also your ordinal variable. So if I want to print the ordinal variables, and I want to see how this data frame looks like ordinal dot head so this will give me now let us see how can I extract a random sample from this since, since this 1000 is also a sample only from the entire population but suppose for a given data set if you want to extract a sample so I will just quickly tell you how you can do that extract suppose you want to extract a sample of size n say 5 then what you will do so I assign 5 to n and I create a new data frame random underscore sample that contains n randomly chosen rows from the original data frame that was data okay so for this what I will write is the data was the original data frame from there I want to randomly select a sample of rows and if I write this argument over here it specifies how many rows I want to extract okay So I will just write it is a random sample, random sample of 
size in and if I want to see what is the new data frame now I can print it so let us see how does it look like so this is basically from the data size original data was of has rows 1000 but now this random sample has been taken which is of size 5 now suppose I change make a change over here I make it 10 and then I run it then it will give me a sample of 10 size 10 okay see here it is printing size n over here so what I have to do I want it to read it as whatever the value of n is so for that I can write f so I have to write this as in this in curly brackets so random sample of size 10 so once I write this in this over here it will automatically get updated with whatever the value of n is suppose I now make this change over here 5 so everything will automatically change I don't have to change n specifically everywhere right so here you see the heading now becomes random sample of size 5 okay thank you